Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today I'm going to show you how to install Windows 11 the right way. That is, on a computer that doesn't support Windows 11, if you have to, how to avoid creating a Microsoft account, and some post-installation tips. So the first thing to do is to get a Windows 11 installation ISO. Why do we want the ISO? Because we're not going to use the Microsoft Media Creation Tool, we're going to use a free and open source tool called Rufus instead. By doing that, we're able to automatically patch out the requirements and create a local account with our names choosing. That'll just save us some time, but don't worry, I'm going to show you if you're not able to do that, or if you're on a virtual machine, I'm going to show you how to do it uh, the manual way as well, so that you're able to. Now, something I was asked in my Discord when we were talking about bypassing the requirements is, does bypassing the requirements create security issues? The answer is no. I'll put an asterisk on that. While there's not really any benefit to having a TPM as a consumer, other than that some game anti-cheats might require it, you could make the case. But compared to running Windows 10, Running Windows 10 or Windows 11 is more secure. There's no there's no regression you're going to get from installing Windows 11 without a TPM. Rufus is really easy to use. Just select the ISO, uh, click Start, and then it will prompt you for those settings. So now we're gonna we're gonna start the installation process. You'll have to press any key to boot from CD or DVD. And now we get the start up screen. I'm using 24. H2 for this video, but in the future you will probably have a newer version. Now the first step to bypassing manually is we go Shift F10 and then we can go Reg Edit. So H key local machine system setup and then we want to create a new key called lab config. This is where we can create a bypass, because I guess this is intended to be used in the lab for testing. Now we're going to create a D word, and here we can bypass each check that we need to. Now this VM does have a supported CPU, but it doesn't have a TPM, so we can fix that, and we can add more as well. Bypass CPU check if you have a CPU that is unsupported. And we can bypass the RAM check as well, although I imagine uh, if you have a computer made in the last 20 years, you'll probably not need to bypass that. So now we're ready to proceed with the installation. We install Windows 11, and we agree that everything be deleted, even though if we don't have a drive, it won't be. You don't need a product key, but you can specify one, and you can choose what edition you want. If you choose Pro, it will be easier to bypass the Microsoft account, but with the technique I'll show you, you can also do it with Home. So we're going to install Home. You accept the license agreement. Please wait. It'll search for disk, and hopefully it'll find your disk. If it doesn't, there is a load driver option, but I've never seen that come up on modern versions of Windows. Last time I've had to do that was when I tried to install Windows 7 on a very early NVMe drive, so you're probably good. And here we're just we're ready to go. We don't get the error message. And now installation is running. So we're all good until the next step. Now there is one addendum I'm going to have about the TPM bypass. And that is that many games will require it. So if you wanted to, for example, play League of Legends or Valorant, they will let you install on Windows 10 with no TPM, but not 11. Given Windows 10 is going to be dead in a few months, I imagine that requirement will be broadened. The good news is, if you have a computer made really probably within the last 10 years, it is very likely you'll just be able to get a discrete TPM. It's definitely possible for Haswell, or if you have a server motherboard that simply doesn't come with a firmware TPM, uh, you can do that to solve that problem. And after a reboot, you'll see this screen. And now the OOB, that is out of the box experience, is going to start. Now there are a couple of ways of bypassing. As I mentioned in a recent video, bypass NRO, the method that was popular before, is dead. So you can't do that anymore. But whether or not 1337 on X has found a method with the command start ms-cxh colon local only, 
that will make it work. There are others, and this will be in flux, so you may, I will update the description if it changes, you may have to Google this. Bypass NRO still works on all current ISOs, but in the future will not. We'll see what happens to the other workarounds. Realistically, it will always be possible one way or another. So we'll open a command prompt using Shift F10. Type the command in. And there we go. To set up your device using a screen reader, turn on narrator by pressing. And we just skipped the whole out of the box experience. Now, from my memory, it looks like it actually spawned the old OOBE from Windows 10 by doing that. And now we can turn off uh, all of the privacy settings because you probably don't want to enable any of these. I would be especially cautious about this one. I don't I don't like the idea of everything I type going to Microsoft servers. We'll do more about that once we boot in as well. So we have now gone with the most uh, least permissive. Now from here, we can look into further setup. A lot of this is going to be personal preference. I personally don't do any debloating at all. I think it's a complete waste of time that can create stability issues down the line, but I will show you one of the safer tools to do that. I'm going to strongly recommend, do not run, what I'm going to call them kitchen sink tweakers. Tools like one of the ones that recently went viral was called Falcon. Another one is Atlas OS. The problem with these tools is they do a bunch of things. You don't really know exactly what they're doing, how they might break your system in the future, and what they're doing. Sometimes they'll do things like remove edge or OneDrive that might be a dependency for some obscure app down the line. There is no benefit to doing this. I just don't recommend it. So first of all, first tool I'm going to show is ONO Shut Up 10. This is a privacy preserving tool, and I do think there is value in doing that if it's something you're concerned about. Another reason you should do this, if you're setting up a VM for malware analysis and you're monitoring the traffic, you want to have as little noise as possible. So even if you don't care what's going to Microsoft, you may still want to minimize the noise. Now we can turn. Yeah, we don't I don't care about restore points. Turn all of these off. Turn these off. Definitely get rid of remote assistance because that can be a security problem. Now these, it's kind of a tragedy of the commons. Uh, you, you are helping, but you are, that means every unknown exe you run gets sent to Microsoft, which you might not want. I think OneDrive can be useful, but if you don't use it, uh, you may want to turn it off. This is, gr you do want to disable this because you want to save your bandwidth. If you don't like these AI features, you should turn them off. These have a huge impact because if you don't disable the Bing online search, every time you type something in, uh, you are sending data to the cloud, which you probably don't want. Now let's go on to another tool that you may want to use. This is the Chris... Titus Windows tool. This is one of the safest and most transparent Windows utilities. It's simple. It doesn't run the risk. There's a offline download that you have to pay for, but there's also a free download you can get just from an administrative PowerShell. So we'll just go to Windows Terminal. Give that a second. And now we've got the tool. We can go um, here is actually got his own version of sort of Nyanite where you can actually download tools that you want. Like if you wanted a different browser, maybe you want Chrome, you can do that. And now it's installing. Then there's the tweak tab. One thing you can do is you can turn on donk theme even if you're not activated. You can get numlock, verbose messages, you can get rid of these. Probably want rid of mouse acceleration, especially if you're playing games. You can also put the verbose blue screen back. And here you can do some simple recommended tweaks. And get rid of temp files. You can disable telemetry. We actually already did that with ONO Shut Up. Uh, you can also, there are some service tweaks here. What that does is it sets a bunch of services that would otherwise run by default. Uh, that can have a small performance benefit. And then you can click run. Uh, but first of all, it's just doing the Chrome download. Go config and you can do more things. You can install some Windows features and you can change update settings. Do not do this unless you are creating a malware sandbox. You can do this one, delay feature updates as long as you can, and security ones, or you can go with the default settings. I don't have a huge preference personally. I, I think there is a benefit to delaying a bit so that you're not becoming a beta tester. 
but I, I don't feel the need to wait two years for feature upgrades, because some games might depend on that. Now onto security settings. If you're going to install a third party security solution, now is a good time to do it. If you're not, Windows Defender's default settings, much as Windows Defender isn't a great antivirus, are about as good as anything else. Getting rid of these does improve your privacy, a bit of a tragedy of commons, but I wouldn't blame you for doing it. Uh, this setting is really important. It's not perfect, but if you don't have that, it's just one PowerShell command with no administrator to turn off Defender, so you really want that. You also can, this is a bit janky, but you can set up controlled folder access on your documents. This won't protect you from stealers, but it should prevent ransomware from encrypting your data, even if that ransomware is undetected by Windows Defender. So, that is going to be all for this video. Please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. Let me know what you uh, think about any of this or any other Windows installation tips. Of course, do, do note I don't allow links in the comments, so you cannot link to third-party tools. So for me for now, bye!